Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. On this December 31st, we have a bonus from another pastor, another short look at Luke chapter 8 and the demon-possessed man. After today's earlier reading from Luke chapter 8, I remembered that one of my classmates, who's now a pastor down in Kentucky, um, kind of used the account of the demon possessed man from Luke chapter 8 during his youth ministry um, at uh, a campfire one night and he wrote about it on his blog and I'll include the link in the show notes and also in the show notes um, I'll include a link to Pastor Alan Sorum's book um, about 1000 demons not stronger than my Jesus or something like that it's available on Amazon and on Audible and it's a fantastic little book if this is a topic that interests you or scares you a little bit um, to see the power of Jesus against every unseen spiritual force but uh, here goes from Pastor Italiano um, entitled what's scarier a demon or Jesus the fire crackles some mores have been eaten the teens have gathered it's the last night of the teen camp out for our church the adults have done a good job keeping everything together. I've come out to join them today. We went swimming, had a Pac-Man tournament. The guys had been flirting with every girl on the campsite, and now the sun has descended. The darkness has come. We've gathered together. They're all looking at me. So what's scarier, a vampire or a werewolf? The young men break out into a spirited discussion of the comparative terror-inducing qualities of each brand of supernatural creature they debate different types of vampires. What's scarier, the mummy or Frankenstein's monster? One young woman disappoints me a little by having no clue what the mummy is. The guys argue, but it's not nearly as intense as before. What's scarier, a demon or Jesus? A pause. Most of the young men reflexively answer, well, a demon. One stops. Well, Jesus is more powerful. That could be scary. That starts a good discussion going. At last they quiet down and look back at me. They know there's more coming. I wouldn't ask that question unless I was going to go somewhere with it, right? And then I tell them a story. A true story. I relate to them an account of someone that was indeed more scared of Jesus than the demons. I tell them about Benjamin, a Jewish pig herder that watched his herd over the cliffs that lead down to the Sea of Galilee. I tell about the man who lived in the caves in the tombs below, a man named Legion. I use all the details from Mark chapter 5. He cuts himself with rocks, he breaks his ropes, he breaks any chains used to bind him, he beats any man that tries to restrain him. He runs naked in the tombs. He is clearly out of his mind, and Benjamin hates it. He hates how herding pigs makes him unclean and unable to worship God, but he needs to earn a living if he hopes to marry Elizabeth, the girl of his heart. He hates being near Legion. He hates the sound of laughter bouncing up from the caves below, yet he chooses to live with it. He needs to earn a living after all. He needs to earn a living. And as I tell the story of all the things Legion does, their eyes are on me, they're riveted, they jump when I break out in Legion's laugh. <laughs> it's a crazy laugh. I had trained myself to cackle years ago. Sometimes theater training really helps in the ministry. And then I tell them of the day visitors came from across the sea. A boat with 13 men land on the rocky shore. Benjamin comes to watch. This should be fun, after all. If Legion can handle 20 men, 13 will be no problem. At least the demons will provide some entertainment, and sure enough, soon Legion is loping down the shore toward the visitors. And Legion crashes, crashes face first at the feet of the leader. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? This fellow, this Jesus, wrinkles his nose. What is your name? We are Legion, for we are many. Benjamin doesn't understand. Why isn't Legion attacking them? Why is, why is he, he bowing down? Jesus flicks his wrist. Get out of him. Legion goes into convulsions, drooling blood onto the rocks and screaming. It sounds like a thousand pigs squealing at once. No, cast us out into the pigs. The pigs, not into the abyss. Into the pigs. Jesus gives one single nod. And then the herd of pigs 
Benjamin's herd, his only source of income, how he supports himself, the entire herd, 2,000 pigs, all of them, they run for the cliff. 2,000 pigs commit suicide. 2,000 pigs plunge off the cliffs to the rocks below. 2,000 pigs crash against the stones, slapping the ground with a cracking of bones and a huff of breath, and they are dead. And Benjamin flees. This isn't the spectacle he had expected. He grabs the men from his village, they all go, and when he returns to the shore, there is a legion. He's sitting in front of this Jesus. He's dressed. He's not drooling anymore. In fact, he's perfectly sane. Benjamin realizes, as powerful as legion was, Jesus is more powerful, and that is terrifying. Jesus took away Benjamin's livelihood. Jesus killed all those pigs. He chained legion. This is men who cannot stay here. He is too much. Benjamin begs Jesus to leave. Go away. Go far, far away. Jesus submits to the begging. He climbs into the boat with his bewildered disciples. He leaves for the other side of the sea again. Benjamin returns to the village in despair. What will he do now? The herd was in his care. Now he'll need to repay the owner. And one pig isn't cheap, much less 2,000 of them. He goes to the local tavern. He gets a beer. He sits alone. A form sits next to him. Benjamin turns. It's Legion. Legion is sitting next to Benjamin. And Legion shares his story. Shares his story. How he was chained by so many demons. How he couldn't do anything. He was their slave. And then Jesus. Jesus rescued him. Jesus freed him. And now he wanted to share his story. That Jesus wasn't cruel. Yes, he was more powerful than the demons, but he used that power to free Legion. Jesus returned to that area later, and when he returned, he was welcomed. Legion has done, has done his duty. He had shared Jesus. I stopped the story and looked at the teens. You see, Jesus is scary. He's the most terrifying person in the universe. And it's because you're going to see him when you die or when he returns, whichever comes first, and there's no way to escape it. If you don't know him, that's the scariest thing in the world. But if you do know him, it will be the best day you've ever had. On that day, he will tell you, come into the kingdom I've prepared for you. Come get your mansion. And did you notice? Jesus didn't scream at those people who didn't know him. He came to rescue them. They're knowing Jesus didn't depend on their action. He came to them. He came and rescued Legion first and used Legion to prepare the way so that he could come back. So it is with you. You know Jesus because he rescued you, so you have nothing to fear, nothing at all. And I stopped talking. It was the end. The teens waited a second and burst into conversation. <laughs> I need to read the Bible more. Where did that story come from? It's the scariest thing ever. Wow. It was gratifying that the teens enjoyed my retelling from Mark chapter 5, but it was more gratifying that one of them took it as a lesson that he now wants to dig into the Bible more deeply. It's fun relating all the raw emotion that the Bible has. Sometimes I think we forget how arresting God's word can really be. We boil it down to doctrines and theologies and instruction books, and these things are necessary. But sometimes we make it a little too clinical. These doctrines come with riveting stories. These theologies are so often paired with the tales of people that are just like us. We can learn our doctrines and story, and for some, it sinks in far more that way. And especially around a campfire, well, <laughs> it's just the right setting for a good, true ghost story. Again, that was from Pastor Luke Italiano. Uh, he's down in northern Kentucky. I think his church is the closest one to the Ark Encounter. Um, if you get down to southern Ohio area, down by Cincinnati. I'll include a link to that blog post, as well as a link to um, Pastor Italiano's uh, YouTube page. I think he does like five days a week, um, two or three minute video, video clips. And he's actually really, as you can tell, an excellent storyteller. Um, and kind of has a different look at things. 
And then finally, I'll also include, this is the third link, I suppose, I'll also include a link to Pastor Sorum's book about demon possession. Pastor Sorum is our seminary professor that does a lot of training of uh, pastors in other countries. And so he, he deals with and ministers to these people and trains these people um, who have to deal with a lot more overt demon possession than the typical North American pastor does. And, and I think that was one of the purposes in writing that book as well. To, to help these men work through what exactly is going on and the fact that the Christian has no reason to fear these demons because Jesus is stronger and Jesus is on our side. And then finally, we have worship tonight at 7 p.m. Um, and everybody is invited over to the Hagen's house afterward. You can contact me if you need the address. You can find us tonight at 2250 South Holland Savinia Road in Maumee. God bless your day.